Now to move on with the sixth question of this paper. In the first part, we are going to express this thing into the harmonic identity of cos, where r is greater than zero and alpha is in radians and it lies in between zero to pi by two radians. So now this, you can do it in multiple ways. The two ways that comes into my mind right away is one method is pretty much longer that I'm not going to follow. That's the normal convention that people follow. That is like, you know, they open this cos theta minus alpha with the formula of cos of A minus B, uh, which is nothing but cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Uh, then you multiply that with R and then you compare it with this thing and you find out the value of R and theta out of it. But the thing that I'm going to show you over here, you see, this is something that you can for sure use it. But now in my academy, I teach a particular method. Now, that method might be a bit confusing for you, but I'll tell you one specific trick that we are going to use over here. If you can understand well and good, but uh, yeah, this is a very shortcut trick that uh, something that you must do. Okay. So if we are having the harmonic identity of cos, you always take the first term as cos. So this is same as writing 12 cos theta, then plus five sin theta. Now, if there is a minus over here for cos, the opposite sign should be plus. And that automatically follows like you know, the identity of cos, okay? that if there is minus plus should come in between. So now, because this is valid, we say that this is the value of A, this is the value of B. Even if the sign was negative over here, B would still be five, not negative five. That's something uh, that we must know for the method that I'm teaching. Now, R, is simply square root of a square plus b square, 12 square plus uh, 5 square, it's going to come out to be 30. And theta is always tan inverse of b by a. So now b is 5, a is 12. So this becomes tan inverse of 5 by 12. Now, what happens? A lot of students say that this is A, this is B, and they'll come on to an incorrect answer if they follow that method. And that's why knowing this kind of trick of harmonic identity is pretty much crucial over here. And now when I solve this in my Kelsey, keeping my Kelsey in my radiance mode, the answer that I'm getting correct to three significant figures is 0 0.395 radians. So now this is the value of R, this is the value of uh, alpha, I should say, not theta. That's not correct, that's alpha because theta is a variable, right? And alpha is a constant value that we have to find. So the final answer that we'll be fetching out of it is that I can write that 12 cos theta plus five sine theta, 12 cos theta plus five sine theta as 13 times cos of theta minus this alpha. All right. And yeah, that's that's the answer of the first part of question six. Now the second part would be involving, like you know, we'll be using this to find something. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of everything else apart from that final part that will be requiring maybe for the next part. So if I go ahead and see, yes, we have to solve that particular question and let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'll just shift it upwards somewhere over here. And let's begin solving this. So, first of all, if you're able to relate these equations, five sine theta plus 12 cos theta. Now in place of theta, we are replacing theta with two X. That's the only one change. So this theta is nothing but two X now. So this equation can be written as 13 cos in place of theta, I'm writing 2x. And then I'm also having minus 0 0.395. I'm not changing this because theta is the only thing that is affected, not alpha. So theta, theta has been changed to 2x. It does not mean that alpha is also going to be 2 alpha because there is no relation like that. If theta is changed, only change that. Don't change alpha. Alpha is dependent completely on this 12 and 5. That is not changed. Hence, alpha will not change. Now this is equal to six and we have to solve this for all the values of X in between zero to five. So first of all, what we'll do is 
will convert this domain into this domain. So from x to 2x minus 0 0.395, first of all, I need to take the angle, multiply it with 2. Then whatever is the answer, take away 0 0.395 from it to get my new domain. So 0 times 2 is 0. So we'll start with minus 0 0.395. And the maximum value is 2 pi minus 0 0.395. And that value comes out to be 5.88 some radians. 5.8881 something. Okay. So this is my new domain. I need to find all the answers in this domain first. And then once I get into this domain, I can then just make x the subject of formula and get all the values of x for the domain that is given to us in the question. So how do I solve this kind of questions? First of all, I need to make cost the subject. So cos of 2x minus 0 0.395 is equals to 6 by 30. First of all, I need to find what's my basic angle. So my basic angle, I always mark it by saying 2x minus 0 0.395. And this B stands for basic. This will always be whatever is the trigonometric ratio. You take the inverse. And even the if negative was written, I would still consider the positive of that. Because that's how we find the basic angle. And basic angle must lie in between 0 to 90. And for that, even if there was a negative, I would have removed that to convert it into 0 to 90. And then I'll plot it onto the cost diagram. And now because the value of cost is positive 6 by 13, I need to figure out in which quadrant my cost is positive. So in the first and the fourth quadrant, I know that my cost is positive. So I just have a slant lines. This is my basic angle. And this is also my basic angle. Now I have to figure out from minus 0 0.395 to 5.881. So if I just convert this into degrees, so we get a proper idea of what we are doing. So minus 0 0.395 into 180 by pi. That's minus 22 degrees, minus 22.63 degrees to if I convert that into degrees, that is coming out to be somewhere around 337, 360 degrees. Okay. So now for sure we are lying within the, like, you know, from minus 22 to within 360, right? So that's the kind of idea that we are having. So now let's find what is the basic angle so that we get an idea if a negative answer will be there or not. So cos inverse of 6 by 13, if you get from your Kelsey, it's coming out to be a 1.091068, something like that. Or I can just say 6 dot 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 over here. Now, this is the value that we're getting. So now if we go in the negative domain, I mean, in the, neg in the clockwise direction, this basic angle will be minus 1.09106 which surpasses this value. So there is no solution in the negative domain. So now let's talk about the positive domain. In the positive domain, we are having two solutions for sure. One is the basic angle. One is complete 2 pi. From 2 pi, we are going to get rid of the basic angle. So from 2 pi minus uh, 1.09106 is going to give us the second uh, value in the positive domain. Therefore, the values of 2x minus 0. Uh, 395 will be equal to first of all is the basic angle that's in the first quadrant and the second value is 2 pi minus this so if i did directly do this in my calc 2 pi minus that i'm getting the answer of 5.19211 dot 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 these are my values for 2x minus 0 0.395 now i have seen a lot of students doing one mistake that once they find this angle they make x the subject and once they make x the subject, then they find the second angle. That's an incorrect approach. First, we need to find all the solutions for this domain. Once we are done with that, then we can make x the subject. That's the correct approach of this kind of questions. So now we are uh, having all the solutions for this domain. We don't have any kind of solutions in the negative domain. And therefore, if you make x the subject by adding 0 0.395 and dividing it by 2 for both these equations. Let's see what do we get. 1.09106 
plus 0 0.395 and if I take this whole uh, equation and divide it by 2, I'm getting my first value coming up to be 0 0.743 and the other value of x that I'm getting, let's say this is x1, this is x2. Now in place of 1.09106, I'll write 5.19211. And the answer is coming out to be 2.79. And both of them are correct to 3SF. Both correct to 3SF. And these are the final answers of question B as well. I hope there is no part C, I guess, because these are enough questions. Yes, there is no part C. So we are done with question 6.